surprises in our environment, in our, in our society, uh, in the markets. Lots of surprises. Amazingly, so many of us are surprised by our own retirement. Why is that? Seems like the later innings uh, go by a lot faster than the early innings sometimes in that, in that retirement approach also. And su surprises this year is um, maybe the understatement, right? Yeah. But I think when it comes to retirement, it's even more so about how are we going to pay for it? Where is the cash flow going to come from? I'd guess the 401k and the savings account. I mean, that's part of it. But the problem there, Lou, is you're, you're tapping into your principal. It's like if we take the furniture and we throw it into the fireplace to burn it. That's not going to last long. Yeah, what do we do when the furniture runs out? What do we do when our investment dollars run out? We've got to rethink this entire paradigm of how we're going to generate cash flow in retirement. And in the old days, even as recently as 25 years ago, it was easy. You could get a 7% interest on your CD. You didn't have to worry about the stock market. Most people had a pension plan, or at least one working spouse did. You also had Social Security. Social Security, by the way, was designed for you to retire at 65, and then very conveniently die at 72. Well, a lot of us are living longer than seven years in retirement. In fact, we're living longer in retirement than we do in our work years. And we're not getting the 7% interest anymore. The best we can probably hope for is about 1%. How do you get that 7% back? 7% is a, a, a pretty steep hurdle. But at Capital Wealth Planning, we, we look at it from a two-prong approach from income. We're looking at high-quality, blue-chip stocks that pay dividends. So the, the idea is that whether stock markets are up, down, or sideways, we want to make sure that our retired investors are getting paid along the way. So we look for companies with strong balance sheets, great free cash flow. We want companies that are paying dividends and increasing those dividends over a long retirement. If we can get 25 to 3% collectively on the dividend, then that's half the battle. The second component is we utilize a covered call technique. Now, I know we're going to talk about that in the next segment, but we use covered calls to help mitigate risk the byproduct of that is a, a modest cash flow. Generally, we're going to be able to deliver between 25 to 4% a year in option premiums. So that if we can get 25 to 3 in dividends, 25 to 4 in option premiums, that we've got a 5 to 7% cash flow on a stock portfolio, which can help with that income need. But it's stocks. And isn't that risky? We have to be very clear that there's going to be more risk in the stock market than there is in the insured CD market. That's a fact. It's not an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. And at the same time, it's not an all-or-none proposition. A 60-40 stock bond allocation may be able to allocate a little bit more into a dividend-oriented portfolio for appreciating and increasing cash flow in retirement. And this isn't unique to capital wealth planning. I mean, this is Warren Buffett. This is Benjamin Graham looking for great American companies that increase dividends as a means of appreciating income in retirement. If you told me you were going to keel over at 72, it wouldn't matter. I'd let you burn the furniture and use your principal. But, <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, well, I, I know you're going to be around a long time, and we need to plan for that. So, so rethinking and looking at dividends and looking at option premiums as an income stream for retirement, I think, is a very viable uh, allocation technique. So what's the bottom line? The bottom line, Lou, is it's all about cash flow. Cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. We need to plan for retirement. We need to plan for a long retirement. We need to increase that cash flow throughout that long retirement. And at the end of the day, we need to retire the anxiety.